and welcome. In our lesson today, we are going to discuss extraction of aluminium metal. So aluminium has the following ores. There's corundum, mica, and lastly, bauxite. Now, bauxite is considered to be the main ore of aluminium. Now, as you can tell from the chemical formula, bauxite is simply hydrated aluminium 3 oxide. So aluminium is extracted from bauxite through electrolysis. But before electrolysis can happen, the ore first needs to be concentrated. Now, when we talk about concentration of the ore, it simply means removal of as many impurities as possible. Now, ores tend to have a lot of impurities. These can be other minerals, sand, soil, etc. Collectively, they are known as gang. So these impurities need to be removed. Now, in the case of aluminium, this happens as follows. So bauxite contains quite a few impurities, but the two most common ones are silica. Silica is silicon 4 oxide and iron 3 oxide. Now, this is aluminium 3 oxide from the bauxite. So what happens is that by the time this step is done, by the time the ore is concentrated, we should have been able to isolate the iron 3 oxide and the silica and remain only with the aluminium 3 oxide. Now, how does this happen? So step number one, the ore is crushed. Now, when we talk about crushing of the ore, simply means grinding of the ore into a fine powder. Now, this, of course, is to increase the surface area of the ore that will come into contact with the chemicals that will be added. This, in turn, speeds up the rate of the reaction. So, after crushing, the powdered ore is then added onto hot, concentrated sodium hydroxide. Now, let's pause there. We have three oxides as of now. So, these are the three oxides present in the powdered ore. There's aluminium oxide, there's silicon 4 oxide, and lastly, there's iron 3 oxide. Now, we are adding this mixture onto sodium hydroxide. Now, sodium hydroxide is a basic solution. So, what happens is that out of these three, only two are going to react with the sodium hydroxide. Now, let's start with aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide is an amphoteric oxide. So, it reacts with acids as well as bases. So, of course, it's going to react with the sodium hydroxide solution. Now, this reaction leads to the formation of sodium aluminate. Next one, silica. Silica is an acidic oxide. Acidic oxide, sodium hydroxide, which is a basic solution, a mixture made in paradise. So, what do we have? We have uh, silica, sorry, reacting with concentrated sodium hydroxide to form sodium silicate. Now, lastly, iron 3 oxide. Iron 3 oxide does not dissolve in sodium hydroxide. It does not react with sodium hydroxide. So that means that it's just going to remain there unreacted. So these two form soluble solutions. But the last one, nothing. So how do we separate the first two from iron 3 oxide? By filtration. So let me write down the equations, go through them again, and then talk about the next step. So here are our equations. Silica reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium silicate. On the other hand, aluminium 3 oxide reacts with sodium hydroxide. Let's pause there. In case you're wondering, where is this water coming from? Just a reminder, bauxite is hydrated aluminium 3 oxide. So that simply means it contains water of crystallization. So this leads to the formation of sodium aluminate. Now, as you can tell, from the step symbols, these are soluble salts. Iron 3, on the other hand, iron 3 oxide, on the other hand, does not react with sodium hydroxide. So, it can simply be separated out through filtration. Now, when this mixture is filtered, we are going to get our filtrate and the residue. The residue, of course, is going to be iron 3 oxide. Filtrate is going to contain the sodium silicate and the sodium aluminate. So, of course, the next logical step is separating these two. Remember, we are supposed to be extracting uh, aluminium. So, this is our end goal. For the next step, precipitation of aluminium hydroxide. So, currently what we have is sodium silicate and sodium aluminate. Now, in order to separate these two, what happens is that aluminium hydroxide present in the sodium aluminate needs to be precipitated out. Simply move out of the solution. Now, this can be done in either one of these two ways. Either by CD 
or by bubbling of carbon four oxide. As for the seeding process, this is an ionic equation representing what is happening and what happens during the seeding process. So crystals of pure aluminum hydroxide are added onto the solution. Here they are. Now this forces the aluminate ions in the solution to be precipitated out in form of aluminum hydroxide. Now on the other hand, bubbling of carbon four oxide can also be done with the same results. Aluminum hydroxide is precipitated out of the solution. So at this point, we have managed to remove the two impurities, ion three oxide and silica. Now moving on to the next step. What will happen is that the aluminum hydroxide obtained is simply going to be roasted. Roasted is going to be heated at high temperatures. Now, the reason is because on heating aluminum hydroxide, it decomposes to form water and aluminum oxide. Now, taking, taking you back to the introductory part, I mentioned that aluminum is extracted through the electrolytic method. So, in order for electrolysis to take place, we need an electrolyte present. That cannot be aluminum hydroxide. So it can only be aluminum oxide. So of course, heating of this causes it to decompose, leading to the formation of aluminum oxide. So we have aluminum oxide. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with the concentration of the oil, finally. So just to summarize, summarize, all of these, step number one, crushing of the ore into powder. Step number two, addition of hot concentrated sodium hydroxide under pressure. Now this of course leads to the formation of sodium aluminate and sodium silicate. Iron 3 oxide on the other hand does not dissolve. Now this can be removed by filtration. So iron 3 oxide is removed as the residue. The filtrate will contain sodium silicate and sodium aluminate. Number four is precip sorry, precipitation of aluminum hydroxide. This can be done in either of these two ways, either by sealing or bubbling of carbon four oxide. And then the last one, roasting of aluminum hydroxide to form aluminum oxide. On to the next step, electrolysis. Now, electrolysis is a process whereby electrical energy is passed through ionic compounds causing them to decompose. Now, aluminum 3 oxide is an example of ionic, an ionic compound. So that means that technically it can conduct an electric current, but it needs to be either in aqua state dissolved in water or in molten state. Now, the reason for this is because when it's in solid state, the ions are in fixed positions. So they cannot move about transmitting an electrical current. Therefore, electrolysis cannot take place. But when in molten state or aqua state, the ions become mobile. That means that they can now move around the structure transmitting the current. So what needs to happen is that the aluminum 3 oxide needs to be heated until it melts. Now one thing is that aluminum 3 oxide has a very high melting point of more than 2000 degrees Celsius. Actually 2015. So this is the melting point of aluminum 3 oxide. Now you can imagine the amount of electricity that will be required to melt huge quantities of aluminum 3 oxide until they are in liquid state, they are molten, and ensuring that they remain molten. So in order to save on costs, a compound by the name of sodium cryolite is added. So what does sodium cryolite do? It simply lowers the melting point of aluminum from around 2000 degrees Celsius to 800 degrees Celsius. So this is sodium cryolite. Now this is a common question whereby students get, uh, get asked, what is the purpose of sod addition of sodium cry uh, cryolite during extraction of aluminum? So it lowers the melting point of aluminum from this to this. Now, once we have aluminum 3 oxide in liquid state, then electrolysis can take place. Now, what happens at the electrodes? So we have two electrodes, 
the anode and the cathode. Now these electrodes are made from graphite. Now we know why graphite is usually preferred because uh, it, it's inert and therefore does not react with the compounds that are formed at the electrodes. And it's also relatively cheaper compared to others. Now, at the anode is where oxidation takes place. This is the loss of electrons. So whatever ions end up at the anode are going to end up losing electrons. Now in this case, we're going to have oxygen ions migrating towards the anode, losing two electrons. Now the number of electrons that are lost or gained by a species depends on its valency. At the cathode, reduction takes place. This is gaining of electrons. Now aluminum ions are going to be present at the cathode. So they're going to gain three electrons each and be deposited in form of aluminum. Now up to this point, I want us to look at the half equation of the anode. We know that oxygen is diatomic. Diatomic, it exists as such. So you'll never find oxygen occurring as such. That means that we need to rectify our half equation a bit, change it a bit to reflect this. So let's move on. So over here, this is what we're going to have. Now, if we end up having a molecule consisting of two atoms of oxygen, that means that initially we should also have two oxygen ions. So there we are, two oxygen ions. These lose two electrons each. So we're going to have a total of four electrons being lost. Why four electrons? Two from each oxygen ion. Now there we have it. Now this is our half equation representing what happens at the anode. Now the electrons that are lost at the anode are those that are gained at the cathode. So we need to balance the number of electrons at both the anode and the cathode. Now if you look at our two half equations, the electrons that are there are not balanced. We have four at the anode and three at the cathode. So we look for the LCM of 3 and 4, this gives us 12. So that means that if we take this, the whole of this equation, multiply it by 3, take this, multiply it by 4, we are going to have an equal number of electrons. So this will give us 3 multiplied by 4, 12 electrons, and over here, of course, 12 electrons. Now we can write our final half equations for the two sides. And there we have it. So when we open this bracket, 3 by 2 gives us 6. So we're going to have 6 oxygen ions. Uh -huh. This gives us 3, of course, 3 oxygen molecules. And lastly, 12 electrons that are lost at the anode. Now on the cathode side, if we open up the bracket again, we're going to end up having 4 aluminum ions gaining 12 electrons in total so each aluminium ion is going to gain three uh, uh, sorry three electrons so in total we're going to have 12 electrons that are gained and then how many atoms are we going to form four aluminium atoms so there we have it now oxygen is discharged at the anode so even though we talk about graphite being inert and so on over time what happens is that the oxygen reacts with the carbon, which is simply graphite, and the graphite uh, electrode, sorry, the graphite anode has to be replaced time and time again because of this. So it's eroded over time. Now, one last thing I'd like to mention is this. Aluminium can be relatively expensive compared to other metals. And this is because the process itself is costly. Reason number, one, reason number one why it is so is because bauxite requires a lot of purification. Now, this is something we discussed in detail. The concentration of the ore, as you can see, it requires, it's quite complex. So that is one reason why aluminium is expensive. Another is because of the high amounts of electricity that are used. Electricity is used in two ways. Number one, to melt the aluminium three oxide to molten state, uh -huh, we discussed this. And another reason is to ensure that the molten aluminum does not crystallize. So continuous heating takes place. So of course, this ends up increasing the cost of aluminum at the end. So that brings us to the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching the video and please don't forget, 
If you want further practice, please tune into my video where I'll be discussing past KCSE questions on aluminium extraction. Thank you. Bye. Subscribe and like, please.